I use the technology to my advantage, having an IT background, and it really helped to shortcut this process. I was on Google My Business before everyone else. I started collecting reviews before everyone else. I'm always the first to, to do those things and use technology to my advantage. So to go back to kind of like the early stages of your business career in those early, early days, what were some of the things that you did early on to get the ball rolling? Like you said, you had to learn marketing, you had to learn all these things, but did you learn all those things first and then decide to turn the switch on and start the business or did you kind of just learn as you went? So I kind of a serial entrepreneur, if you will. I started my first business in the fifth grade. I made little paper origami frogs and I was selling them for a nickel, you know, the small ones for a nickel and the large ones for 25 cents. That lasted about 45 minutes until the teacher shut me down, AKA the government, the government shut me down. So I've always kind of had this business mentality prior to getting into construction, which I had mentioned kind of trying to figure out what I was doing after the Marine Corps, I had a computer business building computers. And so I was very well versed in technology and using technology. And I really leveraged that to my advantage. When I started websites were they were out there, but they weren't really mainstream, kind of like how TikTok is right now. It's still early in the game and people are still coming on in droves. That's how websites were. And so I went out and I built a website. None of my competition had websites. It wasn't even really a requirement yet. They still had the yellow pages. They were still doing things the old way. One of my competitors had a website and it was literally just like a picture of his business card on one page. So you'd go to the website, it was just a picture of his business card. You know, I use the technology to my advantage having an IT background and it really helped to shortcut this process. I was on Google My Business before everyone else. I started collecting reviews before everyone else. I'm always the first to, to do those things and use technology to my advantage. But one thing I did early on, and I knew this because the developer that I was working for was in a BNI group, Business Networking International. So a week after I started my business, I joined a BNI group. And that was probably the biggest catalyst for me really to stay in business and to learn how to network. I mean, I knew how to be friendly to people, but I didn't fully understand what networking was. and so through BNI and networking and getting up in front of people and giving my 10 minute speech or doing my 60 second commercial each week that really helped to get to the point to where I felt comfortable talking in public or things like this it really helped further that ability to market myself so BNI was very crucial early on to the success of my business and that just shows the importance of networking and community and being part of something like that how I could really accelerate the process yeah and absolutely whether you like it or not in everything it doesn't matter networking is how things get done and like i said you can either be mad or upset about it because somebody's brother works for the city and he got the contract but that's how things are and so you can either be about that or you can play the game as well and i don't mean in like a malicious way or underhanded way but it's all about networking it's about who do you know or who do you know who knows a lot of us don't realize it's not about we have to know everybody we just have to know people who who know the people that we're trying to get in front of. So a few of the things that I really liked about Hammer and Grind in general is how straightforward you are. Like <laughs> you are, I don't want to say the cold, I think you're just realistic, which I appreciate because a lot of people try to sugarcoat things and make it seem like, hey, everyone can do this. And one thing I noticed on Hammer and Grind, it's like, no, not everyone can do this. Only a small 4% of you can potentially do this. According to the Labor Bureau statistics, 96% of contractors will fail in the first 10 years. And I don't know if that's correct or not, but that can easily be lowered as far as the failure rate or increase as far as a success rate. Unfortunately, contractors, and I think it's the nature of the business of we usually create stuff. We are creators, we're craftsmen, we're building things usually from nothing or remodeling or whatever 
whatever it is that we're doing, we are responsible for creating whatever it is. And so there's a lot of pride that comes with that. And there's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. However, our pride tends to carry over into the business side of things. And I think a lot of contractors believe that if I can build a house, if I can build a pond, if I can remodel a bathroom, whatever it is, surely I can build a business. And so a lot of ego, a lot of pride gets in our way, myself included. That's why I did it wrong for like nine years. I mean, I made my life miserable for nine years because I thought I could build it. That's just not the case for a lot of people. And so being direct has never been a weakness of mine. I'm often accused of being too direct. I'm often accused of being too blunt. Everyone has their own flavor, if you will, but I've never been accused of not knowing where I stand on something. I've never been accused of being dishonest or leading people on. And so a lot of times on our coaching calls with my coaching group, whenever someone's looking for feedback, I always ask them, do you want me to be nice or do you want me to be honest? That's one thing I noticed straight out the gate when I was looking into the business and all that. And so with that, that is actually something that comes up all the time where tradespeople in general believe that they can build anything so they can build a business. So how do you make people aware through your coaching that that's not the case? What are some tips that you can just give to someone who's potentially in that position? They're just like banging their head on the wall. Like, why can I build a house, but I can't make this business work? What are some just simple, whether it's a, a mindset shift, what is it that someone can take action on or get a realization moment if they're in that position right now? Well, if I knew the answer to like how to convince contractors to get help, I would probably be retired and sipping the Mai Tai on a beach somewhere. Unfortunately, that's one of the most frustrating things as a coach that I've experienced in the past year is that contractors are usually hard headed and it's usually almost like a last ditch effort. And that's how it was for me. I joke around and I say that I've quit my business, you know, 847,000 times over the past 13 years because I would get so frustrated when I would say, that's it, I'm done, I'm not doing this anymore anymore. And then I would wake up the next day and start over again. So a lot of it came out of frustrations of not knowing how to do it. And then I finally just got to the point where it's like, okay, either I need to fix this or I'm done for real done. And I started looking and searching online and YouTube and all of the things that were available. And I really had to make the investment in myself. I remember the first time I bought a course or something, it was like $79 for like a one hour webinar or something like that. And I was like, man, I don't know if this $79 is going to be worth it. And it was, it was just getting over that initial hump of making that investment. Now, I mean, as I speak to you right now, Caesar, I have four different coaches for me and my businesses. It was a mindset shift. And that is what it is. It's literally a mindset shift of anyone who's ever been successful in anything in their life has had people along the way to coach them, whether it was a mentor, whether they paid them, whatever. Michael Jordan didn't become Michael Jordan on his own. If you read the book Relentless, he had a trainer that helped him get to that level. And so it doesn't matter where you're at in the process. People always get to the top on the backs of other people. What I mean by that, as like coaches or mentors or you know that type of stuff and so it really is a mindset shift of you have to invest in yourself and this is why on our podcast i talk about the journey to self-mastery because really at the core of this it's about mastering ourselves it's not really about mastering the construction business